So I had a very unsettling, in a good way, interview with Dr. Roxanne Felix. And I say unsettling because it confirmed a lot of my worst fears about society as a parent with research, including, you know, gems like this. I fear we are truly <laughs> Because her research looks at uh, objectification and self-objectification and how sexism and harassment can lead to both a lack of sense of self and literal physiological changes, including things like how we experience pain. Now, I'm going to show you a, a short clip from this hour-long interview uh, where she talks about some of her research, but... If you're interested in this type, these types of topics, I really do think you should go listen to the whole episode because it confirms a lot of my worst fears, but also affirms the idea that the work we are doing, speaking out against harassment and sexism and misogyny is, is just so important, even more important than ever before. We just navigate this world where, because we're hyper vigilant of who's looking at us and when we become vigilant of ourselves and like how we look and what's happening around us. And it takes us out of our body. And then we don't know who we are. What, and maybe you don't have the answer to this. Maybe there is no answer, but like, what, what do we do? Stop <laughs> like, harassing women. I think about just like, you know, obviously my, my mindset of having two young daughters that yeah. are entering this world, uh, I, I like, fear what, what can we... <laughs> I fear we are truly because what I found yeah. in like I, I've looked at this in several different ways like I've looked at different like different ways that women can be objectified right you can be mm -hmm. objectified by someone else objectifying you and commenting on your appearance or treating you as an object but women can objectify themselves they can do that in various different ways one very common way is editing mm -hmm. your selfies right treating mm -hmm. yourself as an object on a screen to be smoothed and enhanced and whatever. So my master's thesis actually looked at how editing selfies disrupts your self-concept. And I found that women who spent longer editing their selfies when they were in the lab reported a less clear sense of self afterwards. So there was this direct relationship between time spent, you know, treating yourself as an object and not mm. knowing who you are. And we do things like that every day i mean oh, yeah. right now i'm like looking at my appearance and zoom is right. giving me an option to you know enhance my appearance and and we edit selfies all the time and we look right. in the mirror all the time and if you're a woman you have people commenting on your appearance all the time so i don't know because it's so it's so pervasive but what is interesting is in my dissertation i found that men have this same they follow the same path right where when they do experience sexual harassment, it's disruptive, which makes sense because right. again, it's like taking them out of their body. They're thinking about how they look. And because of that, they don't have the cognitive resources to think about how they feel, right? It's like, it's a trade-off. But we asked participants in our sample how old they were the first time they recall experiencing sexual harassment. And women on average reported being like nine and met boys were like 14. So there was a difference in how early this starts. Yeah. And then at all three points of data collection, women reported more frequent instances of sexual harassment. So it's happening earlier and it's happening more often for women. So it's like the way I'm thinking about it is a domino effect. So mm -hmm. the same domino effect is happening for boys and men, but it's starting later so the compounding mm -hmm. effect is not as dramatic um especially at that age when you don't necessarily have the brain development mental faculties and, and the intelligence to deconstruct it and understand and what able, is happening yeah 